Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Thursday, May 25th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Indiana game in exactly 100 days. The game against Michigan in 184 days. Let's add one more uh, number to that countdown. Uh, the uh, Notre Dame game, well, that's going to be in 121 days. And that game is going to be kicking off at 7.30 p.m. on NBC and Peacock. Not a big surprise, but they made that news official on Wednesday afternoon. That will be a primetime game on NBC so uh, set your uh, tailgating and uh, party plans accordingly for that one in week four. So now let's talk about the other game we just talked about. The game against Michigan had a really interesting piece uh, written recently by our good buddy Marcus Hartman of the Dayton Daily News, talking about some perspective from Kirk Herbstreet and Jim Tressel on the rivalry and how, you know, the, the rivalry is, you know, swinging a little bit back towards Michigan right now. And Marcus joins me today. He's my guest. Marcus, I guess the first question I would have is, this is going to be a little bit of a tough sell to an audience that's comprised mostly of Ohio State fans, but is it better for college football on the whole and for the Ohio State-Michigan rival rivalry on the whole and maybe the Big Ten on the whole that the rivalry has swung a little bit and you don't have just this incredible 19-year stretch of dominance for Ohio State anymore? I don't think it really matters, honestly. I mean, if Ohio State was dominant for so long. That's sort of proof that it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, I think people are going to be interested either way. I mean, it may not matter. I know I mean, you know, see a few people uh, like pundits and writers who may be fairly close to one school or the other talk about how maybe it had gotten boring there at, towards the end of uh, Ohio State's run. Um, and I was demoralizing for Michigan fans, I know, uh, and obviously Ohio State fans it was cathartic for. But I, I, as a whole, I don't know that it makes that big of a difference. Just, um, I think it's going to be there. You look at all the different changes that have happened over the years. I mean, Notre Dame has been mostly irrelevant for 20 years, and that hasn't really affected the popularity of college football, thanks to many other things that have happened that have propped up the popularity of college football, but um, I don't think it makes that big of a difference uh, one way or another. I mean, it's it, it goes from, like, it's at 100 all the time, and now with Michigan uh, winning the last two games, that drives it up above. But, I mean, look at the hype around... Um, you know, even like the 18 game or the 16 game where Ohio State was still on this long dominant run and the hype was was still at the top, you know. So I, I don't know if it makes that big of a difference. I mean, if Michigan was just flat out bad, then that would be different. Um, but as long as Michigan goes into the game with like a reasonable chance to win, uh, that, that's one thing that I think like people miss with all these – with with rivalry games is uh, these are big games and they're games that like the the people at ESPN who don't like sports and don't really understand what fans like about sports they still are like oh rivalries people like rivalries so they cover them which is why I always say like like uh Dayton and Xavier should play in basketball, and Ohio State should play the other small, the other schools in Ohio because that gives you a little bit more buzz because it's a rivalry or something like that. You know, it's a bigger deal when West Virginia plays Pitt than when they either of those teams plays somebody else, right? And so, if nothing else, it, it helps the hype train, but I don't know that it hurts it um, if, as long as Michigan is competitive. And, you know, the, that lopsided series, you had some interesting, you talked to Kirk, Kirk Herbstreet as part of this story, and he had some really interesting stuff to say. And, you know, I think a perspective that folks like you and me who are old enough to remember the 90s and what that was like, uh, you know, from the Ohio State perspective, maybe had that some of the younger players, you know, current modern day players, like present players, even guys who played five years ago, maybe didn't have. Uh, the quote he had was, uh, quote, we used to always kid, what's your record now? Uh, Herb Street said of conversations with his sons, and they'd be like 13 and 1, 17 and 2, you know, what's, what's, what's their record in their lifetimes or whatever. And I'd be like, quote, guys, this isn't normal. You need pain. You need to realize that when Ohio State takes the field and has everything on the line and they lose in Ann Arbor and you hear that song, then you'll be crying and you'll understand what that rivalry is all about. You know, I, I wrote probably five, six years ago, this was in the good old days at the Ozone, wrote about the fact that, you know, the real stakes for the Ohio State-Michigan game in whatever year it was, was that Ohio State fans wouldn't have to learn what it was like to lose to Michigan and what that next 365 days is like. Uh, you know, I, I guess, do, do you think, how much do you think the last couple of years has changed the perspective of maybe Ohio State players, but also the Ohio State fan base on what the, you know, the rivalry and what the rivalry really is? 
Yeah. Well, I should say I got <clears throat> I did get those quotes. Those guys were speaking in Toledo, so I got those quotes out of a story, uh, two different stories that Kyle Rowland and uh, Dave Briggs wrote for the Blade. Uh, I just thought that they were interesting, and I thought I could add some perspective to it. And um, and like and I'm glad that you liked it that way. So I, I thought that like, so you're saying you know people and those guys are the same age, which is why they both wrote good stories about it too. Um, you know, people that are a little older, and I put that in the story. I, f I forget I did come up with the cutoff, like people over 20 or something like that have a different perspective. Um, and, and and so I can't speak for the players. I mean, the players said last year, you know, it bothered them, and a couple of them, you for sure, for sure tell. I'm sure they didn't like it, um, but it might take some time to kind of grasp everything from that standpoint. For fans, I mean, there's 100% you can see a difference, especially if you're, like, cruising the message boards or seeing, you know, people react to news online when you look at, you know, different recruiting, especially with Michigan getting into it with more Ohio recruits. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a certain I – I know that PTSD is a real uh, syndrome, and I don't mean to, like, belittle it, but uh, – or um, – or uh, trivialize it, but I mean, you can kind of see that. Like the people who lived through it are all of a sudden like, "Oh wait, we have to worry about Michigan in the off season again." Like, not only do you not want to lose that game every year, uh, and it kind of changes how the winter feels and stuff like that. But it's when when Michigan winning, you know, again makes them. They had been good sometimes, not good sometimes, but when they're winning, that becomes a rival. You think, "Oh, they actually could," um, you know win a recruiting battle too that was that was a thing you know that I, I said my first reaction to losing in 21 which that game was a bit fluky um for a variety of reasons michigan deserved to win but there were a lot of various factors that kind of went into it but you know the number one thing was when they came out of it they said well we learned you know what it takes to work hard in the off season and take ohio state seriously and now it worked so, you know, we just got to keep doing that. And, you know, sometimes that's coach speak or player speak or whatever, but I was buying into that. You know, I said, well, if they're right, then this changes everything. So they gave them proof of concept, which they obviously applied last year, and then they come back and they win again. So now, the, you know, they have proof of concept. They've got momentum. You know, Urban Meyer talked about the importance of momentum, and I think that that's a real thing. A lot of It's a lot of little uninvolved or, you know, little things that are not really related to each other that happen that lead to you having a good football team and a good season, and some of it's the ball bounces the right way. Some of it's you play, you know, zero good opponents for the first 11 weeks of the season. But, um, you know, that's the way it works and so i think you know that it's not a coincidence that they've got it going now um but the it, you really it's really true that ohio state let them off the mat and now they're you know michigan is reaping the rewards and that's got to be a serious threat to ohio state and so that's all you know kind of wrapped up in it and it's different too when you talk about that versus it being you know if it had been just a one-off i mean they really had a chance to kind of shove everything back in the box last year and, and they let it get away and I guess another interesting angle to this is for years, Tony Gerdeman and I have talked about, you know, the fact that Michigan didn't really embrace the rivalry the way Ohio State did, where Ohio State, you know, does the, you know, Brady Hoke did the just called them Ohio thing. But it would sort of get talked about during even under Jim Harbaugh as, you know, you can still have a successful season without beating Michigan. And the Michigan was just sort of the singular focus for Ohio State in the way that, you know, Ohio State was not necessarily for Michigan because, They've got Notre Dame most years. They've got Michigan State. This is not, you know, the only game in town for Michigan in a way that it kind of is for Ohio State. A couple of years ago, I saw a picture of Michigan's weight room, and they had a big thing on the wall that they had just put up that said, what did you do today to beat Ohio State? And that was something that you, you see similar stuff inside the Woody Hayes focused on Michigan, and there's a countdown clock to Michigan and all that kind of stuff. Do you think that Michigan – I mean, obviously Jim Harbaugh has gotten – improve the quality of players on that roster and, you know, has, has, you know, gotten some momentum, as you said, you know, not necessarily playing the toughest non-conference schedule. So you roll in at 11 and 0 and all that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of different reasons that take advantage of the transfer portal in a way that a lot of schools haven't. And so there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but do you think that maybe some of the focus that Michigan has put on the game recently in a way that they maybe hadn't quite as much in previous years, is that something you put any, any stock into? I think for sure they're more more focused. I don't know if it has to be specifically on Ohio State because you're exactly right. I wrote that story a bunch of times when I worked for Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Uh, the the first year I went to Big Ten Media Days, the sec 
second you know the first year um <clears throat> and i wrote a story like there was uh, the ohio state players were talking about how the game was pretty much life or death and at the other end chad henney um you know was giving that same spiel like eh, well whatever you know uh, it's important to beat ohio and important to beat uh michigan state too and bob was like it's like just how different it was just talking to the guys in the same room and uh and, and, I, and that just continued to be true and true and true. So, you know, whether it had to be on Ohio State, I don't know. But I, I, I very much think Michigan had – they've had good recruiting classes off and on for most of they, – they used to actually still have higher-rated recruiting classes a lot of times in the 90s, and they still stopped being able to beat them. And in the first half of the uh, – two thousand like two, 2000 through 2005 or six or seven, they were still signing good recruiting classes, and it didn't matter. So – I always thought that the biggest problem Michigan had was their off-season program and their strength and conditioning. And because they were recruiting well and they were not really converting those guys into the same kind of players that Ohio State was producing, even with lower-rated recruits in the Trestle era. So I think that that for sure had an impact. I mean, I definitely believe that they overhauled their off-season program and that's the number one reason that they had been better the last two years. It's obviously been reflected on their offensive line, which had been no good most of the time for like 15 years. Uh, and and because they don't have great skill players, and they've had okay quarterback play, but they've been a lot stronger and just better overall as football players without just automatically up, updating the recruiting. I mean, Harbaugh had a couple of great classes early on. That 18 team um, was probably his most talented team. The 16 team was pretty talented. I think those teams are more talented than this year or last year. Um, and, and they still didn't beat Ohio State, and they not like they even were undefeated other than that. So I, I think that something or other, they definitely unlocked some things. Things. And when you talk about whatever they did in the twenty one, the twenty twenty one off season, obviously once they see the proof of con- proof of concept, they're able to bring that back last year and keep it going. Well, you mentioned Urban Meyer earlier, and I want to talk about two different uh, former Ohio State coaches and their thoughts on this. One was, you know, talking about what gives you that focus, what you know, what maybe helps you give you a little extra drive during that off season. Uh, there's an old Woody Hayes quote that uh, I'm going to paraphrase it, but it's, you know, nothing, nothing cleanses a soul like getting the crap kicked out of you. And, you know, I think that's something that that'll, you know, you lose by a couple touchdowns to Michigan a couple of years in a row. Well, that, that might help, uh, help with the focus. Not that focus was really an issue last year, I don't think, but you know, that might help with the focus again this year. And then another one, and this was Jim Tressel. He, this was also from the Toledo blade earlier this month. The, the Tressel quote was, uh, quote, I've really grown to be a believer, whether it's a society or family or a football team, until you suffer a little bit, it's hard to learn lessons. Now we've suffered. Other than the fact that Jim Tressel is still using we to talk about Ohio State, even after serving as the university president at Youngstown State for a number of years, uh, you know, it, it feels like that, you know, he's sort of very much in that same mindset where we saw Jim Tressel teams just get the crap kicked out of him a couple times and... They can't, you know, 2006, they lose to Florida. They come back and you make it to the national championship game the next, again the next year. You know, that feels like there's, you know, there's probably some truth there. Yeah, well, and he has said that before. He's, he's said that exact quote, um, I'm sure, more than once about uh, just developing the football team. Uh, it was never applied to Michigan since they didn't lose to Michigan. But, uh, you know, and that was just really in his overall ethos, you know, was that that is part of the way what he really believes in. So I've heard that before. So it triggered a lot of memories just seeing him kind of reference that. So that's another reason that's kind of got me over the top to decide to use those quotes and, and you know, kind of have something for our readers about about it um, was yeah I, I, I think for sure and I, I as, as an aside I thought that the players were ready to play last year um, I, I think that really the coaching staff let them down just in a handful of ways with the way the game was called especially in the first half um, they you know they came out they looked good Ohio State was winning the offensive line and defensive lines they were moving the ball it looked like okay I mean this is a game Ohio State could name their score the way it was going for the first quarter and a half or so and then the coaches kind of um, put them in position to sort of keep Michigan in the game and then credit Michigan for taking that and running with it in the second half um, so uh, you know I, I think the players were will probably be fine. I mean, you know, eventually after the first couple of years of the Cooper, the first couple Cooper teams were no good. They had no chance anyway. But, you know, once they kind of build up that and Michigan became a mental block, then that was in the players' heads as much as the coaches, I think. Uh, so that's something, you know, what Ohio State's going to want to have to avoid uh, from that standpoint. 
But I, you know, I definitely think there were some guys last year that said maybe they took it for granted that they were going to be able to win the Big Ten and and beat Michigan and and that they did have to kind of redouble their efforts last year. Uh, you know, there were so many different things kind of at play last year in terms of all the things that they were doing that it's hard to just pin everything down. Um, so, but this year, you know, there's a lot more variables again this year. I, but I, I mean, it really does come down to what you do to maximize your team in the off season. And that's a lot on the players more than anything. And so I, I think that if they have a, a good off season and if that's a motivation to have a good off season, I think that that will be a big step toward, you know, riding the ship when this year comes around. And it's going to be interesting to see how things shake out. Cause uh, you know, Ohio state's kind of had a Trump card with the quarterback the last few years. Uh, and, and they may not have that. And really the offensive line has been not just good, but really good more often than not in the last 10 years. That's another thing that was over kind of overlooked during the Trestle era. The offensive lines were on balance below average during the Trestle era, and they still managed to win. Um, Meyer really rebuilt that offensive line, even with you know some of the guys he inherited in 12 and 13, and then they rebuilt it in 14 with a, gr a group of new guys, and they really were pretty good. They had a couple of meh years, but overall they've been great on the offensive line. We don't know if that's going to be the case this year. Um, so there's some more variables this year where, you know, even if they take care of business, you know, in the off season, they still, you know, may not, you know, their best, who knows if it'll be good enough to beat Michigan, but, um, I, I don't think that motivation will be a problem. And, and I did think that, that, that Trestle saying that, you know, was sort of a, I think that that's something that should resonate with the players and, and, and with day. And, and I think day gets that part of it as well. It's just a matter of balancing the different things that go into being a college football coach these days. All right, so that's this year. Let's talk just for a minute about next year. Next year, there's a lot of new stuff happening. UCLA, USC joining the Big Ten. The TV deals kick in. And perhaps most importantly, especially in this context, 12-team college football playoffs starting in 2024. In your mind, I mean, this is still this is still the, uh, yes, the thumbs down. Marcus Mark giving us the thumbs down. Yes, sorry, I didn't get a vote on that. I know, I know your thoughts on that already. I believe we've talked about that on a show earlier. But how much does that impact the importance of the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry game in terms of each school season? I mean, we saw last year you can lose a game like Ohio State did, lose to Michigan at the end of the year. You don't make the Big Ten championship game. You still go to the college football playoff and you're – you know, potentially one play away from making the, uh, the national championship game against a TCU team, they probably would have been a substantial favorite over. So, you know, I, I know people look at that as, well, it's going to mean the, the Ohio State Michigan game is totally, totally worthless. And you just saw a year when the team lost at home by 20 points and still made the college football playoff anyway. So does that change the importance of the Ohio State Michigan game when you go from four teams to 12? In a, I mean, the simplest answer would be yes, for sure, because the number one thing about the Ohio State-Michigan game is that is the stakes. Like the Michigan uh, media guide, or the, in their notes every year, they note how many times the, the game had a potential for major impact on the Big Ten standings. So either, in, including it was like 20 times they, it was basically a Big Ten championship game um, amongst themselves. So that was, a, I mean, that's the most important part of the rivalry becoming what it was. I mean, because everybody else has the familiarity and, and and all that, and both teams are good, and blah blah blah. But that's what made it unique. I don't know if there's any other rivalry where they're, they're, you have those kinds of stakes all the time. And so, when you're going to remove that, that does cheapen a little bit. And I think you know it salves the wounds a little bit. First of all, to really salve the wounds, you salve the wound. You've got to win the national championship. Just making the playoff, especially now, making the playoff will be the baseline expectation. So um, it'll impact the game, especially on day like four or five after it's over. But you still end up, you know, if you lose that game and you're in a recruiting battle with somebody um, in April or May, you're still going to really probably have, you're going to be thinking more about Michigan won the last game, or especially if Michigan is on a winning streak, than you, than you would think about recruiting against any other team. Um, so it, it cheapens it some. I mean, I think that, you know, obviously the worst case scenario is that they would play three times, uh, which is why... I think that they should either eliminate the Big Ten championship game or this is the rule that I would do, and I've never heard anybody else suggest this. But if you are not in a round robin, but you're not going to have divisions, which is stupid not to have divisions, somehow that's become like the cool thing to like, but it's the stupidest idea of all the stupid ideas that are out there. 
the conference championship game should be the number one team against the best team they did not play. There should be no rematches in the Big Ten championship game because it's completely ridiculous to make the champion win the, win the league twice. So it's 1,000% unfair and a completely ridiculous concept that I can't believe anybody even begins to accept as an idea. And plus, that would be way better for, really, in every way it would be better because it increases your strength of schedule, it gives you a new game you haven't played before, and it gives, you know, that other team that, uh, who knows what their schedule was like, it gives them another, you know, a chance to, uh, that they didn't have otherwise to play up. So um, that's the thing. I mean, the three, the making, I, I look, if they're going to play again in the play, off so be it you can't control that that's just how it is you know um I've, we've even seen ohio state and michigan play in basketball in the tournament before and so it's not like you know that it's different that will change things but that i don't i don't put too much stock into that because the postseason if there's a real postseason that's just different um but i think what really can cheapen it a lot because you would most likely already know that you're gonna if they're gonna play two weeks in a row, and I bet most of the time, well, you're always gonna know it's possible, and most of the time it would. I bet you'd already know for sure that it was locked in. Um, certainly, you'd know as soon as the game was over. That's what will really cheapen it is if they start playing back to back, especially if it happens with any regularity at all. Um, and which is another reason. That's the number one reason that I was against the original divisional setup. And why I'm against eliminating divisions, because that's the worst thing the Big Ten can do is have Ohio State and Michigan start playing two weeks in a row. And it's completely avoidable. Um, and the offside, you know, the offset of it is actually pretty much all positive as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I, I, it would have been completely unfair for Michigan to have to beat Ohio State again this year or the year before, or Ohio State to have to beat them again in 2018. And But yet everybody's just kind of barreling towards that, like, oh, well, I guess it's inevitable. But I, I, I think that that is the thing that will hurt it more than anything the playoff is the playoff it's 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 a nice i mean i don't know how much how much did in even when they won the rose bowl in 96 how much did it change the feeling of the off season or especially the feeling anytime michigan came up zero like i mean the, they the fact that they won the rose bowl was a huge point of pride especially because it had been so long but they still the michigan the fact that you lost to michigan was still like something that kind of hangs over the whole off season and continues to kind of go into the next year and i think that that will continue to be the case especially if you don't win the national championship um, which obviously you now there's extra steps now to winning the national championship and even when you do you know i think anybody and 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 this goes back to the beginning of this conversation. Anybody who has been around the rivalry long enough know even when you do, it's still not the same as if you had beaten Michigan versus if you lost. Well, thank you to Marcus for being my guest today. I thought that was a really interesting, uh, really interesting article. I'll have a link to that in the uh, post for this podcast on the front page of BuckeyeHuddle.com. So if you want to read that full article, including some of those quotes from Kirk Herbstreit, and Jim Tressel, you can do that right there. Uh, you can also follow Marcus on Twitter. I'll have a link to his uh, Twitter bio and, of course, his uh, to the Dayton Daily News where he writes. Uh, you will have all that on the uh, on the page, the post on the front page of the BuckeyeHuddle.com website uh, for this show. So thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.